Um, I guess I just want to comment on some of the, or, or respond to some of the comments that have been going around, uh, my thoughts about two things. Um, the first, I think, you know, you mentioned initially about capitalism, I think that cannot be overstated. This idea that we can individualize why people aren't coming together as and, and not look up to a construct of capitalism, which is immobilizing people, which is making people not believe in the fact that they can change things, not see that they're being controlled. Yeah. This, isn't, this isn't about an individual strength. This is about a system mm -hmm. which systematically disempowers people mm -hmm. and, and profits off it. Mm -hmm. And if we are to look at HIV without acknowledging that, we're, we're done for. Yeah. We're, we're, we can't move. Secondly, in terms of prevention, prevention comes underneath it. There's an amazing um, video on TED, um, a TED talk by a doctor who specializes in the prevention of HIV and AIDS and works with government who are avoiding educating their communities and, and the people that they're elected to be responsible for to, pre to, to prevent those people from getting HIV and going on to having AIDS because pharmaceutical companies profiteer from it. So this isn't again about you know monogamy or, or coupling or this this is this is about money, this is about capitalism, this is about structures. And I think it's just it's for me it's actually like I'm I'm feeling quite stressed because I, I get quite emotional when things come down to individuals and we don't look at the people who are responsible. This is this is a <coughs> money game and this is about the cost of our lives being thrown up in the air to money. And I just wanna kind of try and navigate the conversation that way somehow with my comments. So you know the name of the, you said you mentioned the TED talk? Ted, I, I, you find I, know it's on, I know it's on the TED website and I know the talk is done by, a, a, I think she's British, a British female doctor. Other than that, I don't remember her name, but I found it by accident as well. So I know if you just search maybe HIV or AIDS on TED, you will see it. Okay. <clears throat> Good day, good, good day, good evening, everybody. Um, my opinion, maybe in um, similar to the sister um, and everybody else, I just want to thank you for providing this day uh, for people to come together. Um, maybe in line with the sister, um, on the financial thing, um, one part of the money is for people to get together. Also, I'm into, um, there's a guy, Lord Disraeli, I think he was a US, UK Chancellor. Him or uh, Montague Norman, at one of the meetings similar to G20, in like 1924 when they changed over the money from gold to finance, they came out with a quote that the business and the money is the team. But when the people are docile and, and not thinking in that kind of German terminology, he said, he said, when they're docile and not thinking, that's when we're supposed to sting them. That's the talk I'm giving to you. Go check out the, the version of it on the room. But the gentleman's name is Montague Norman. He was an English chancellor or something like that in the UK. Check out any kind of way you can randomly search about Monty Norman talk 1920 1924. But he, at one stage, made a point of uh, changing the money from gold or metals to fight to a fiat currency. And that's the state we're in now. And then Lord Disraeli, around that similar time, Lord Disraeli was an um, um, uh, English chancellor, sorry, and he possibly said something like, Oh, now you're going on like that, where you're going off. Um, there's nobody to kick and no soul to down. That's the two comments from many people in the English system. So where my sister said about the system is out for you, that's what it does. It provides us a service, but it's a real disservice. It kind of mashes up the family in a sense. It um, gives us a mental thinking of cognitive dissonance. Yeah, it means roughing up once left to right and all that business. At a certain time, we've got to run into the agency and when we're vulnerable. And the agency don't really help us, it kind of destroys the family. So uh, that's the part of the system um, that is out there. Check out those quotes, come back to whoever you want to come back to and see that's a part of the plan that they've got out there. I think I'm good with that. So. No, you okay. <laughs> um, first question was, what was our initial thoughts about watching that film? And as a teacher, I know there's a few teachers in here, uh, my first reaction was, what's happening there with the um, medication and pharmaceuticals is the same thing what's happening in education. Um, we, we're just generally fed that everything's okay, it's being taken care of for you, and then afterwards when things start to go wrong, that's, when, that's only when people are starting to ask, ask questions. But 
And then as well, I just I watched a, a film, another documentary just recently called Food Inc. And I'm a big rice and peas and chicken person. <laughs> and for anyone who's seen that film, you're going to have to question that. And <laughs> but the thing is, you know, we talk about education and um, there was a comment, I'm glad there's so many people here. There's not many people here. This is, this is nothing. This place should be standing room only packed out, should have been. And even when the film actually started, this room wasn't all like this. People were walking in with 10 minutes to go. So in terms of how well this is being, I don't know, represented, the film's years old. Um, but the, the, mas the matters, the issues, which are really major, um, I think reflect on our fact of, you know, a lot of people just sit in their homes, watching TV, if anything, watching reality shows, so they're not actually having a life, they're watching other people's lives, and not being educated themselves properly. I mean, there's natural um, herbs at the back here, and we're already trained to ignore this kind of stuff and just get whatever we need in Tesco and Sainsbury's. And it just, for me, reflected the whole way we approach medicine, seems to be the same way that we approach education, the same way that we're approaching our health, that no one's actually prepared, and, it's, and especially when the money bot came around, and it didn't match the amount that was needed to pay for this, which, you know, if you do the maths, it's about just two pounds and a little change to be able to do that for all the people in there. It's 50 people, it's 48, 48 or 49 people in there. So that was a little change to put in there. So people consciously make the decision, this is not important to me. You know, buying shoes might be important to me, going to the cinema might be important to me, going to McDonald's might be important to me, but education is not important to me. And you know, our health is not important to me. That's why the person who's selling these things is probably going to go back with a little bit of a loss because most people don't even prepare to look at this kind of stuff. And in terms of, you know, the food, I'll just get a Chinese or I'll, I'll just get a, you know, it's like people are not concerned about what's going on. And I thought it was interesting that, so I'm talking too long because that's my job. But um, <laughs> there was a bit in there where they said they were surprised that the things were working better in India and Africa than they were in, that's because of their diet. Because they've got better diets. That's why the, when you put something better into help, it's going to have better effects because there's not so many things working against it. So I'm done. Um, Oh, sorry, just a quick point. I mean, do you remember when AIDS first kicked off in this country? There, those big adverts, yeah, and the no. big AIDS is coming, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See how they're finished? Yeah, nothing now. No more anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, there's a point over here. <laughs> Eighteen million deaths. I mean, that's the inside. It's almost done on purpose. Eighteen million deaths. People who see those programs around the world didn't populate certain countries. Yeah. I'm actually glad you brought that up because that's something that I was I wanted to bring it to the point. We talked about capitalism, which I think the system. I think you're dead right in terms of. Um, in terms of one, one aspect, this is all about money making for the pharmaceutical companies and control of people who's uh, controlled by governments and stuff like that. But there is a massive depopulation of exercise going on at the moment. Massive, right? And didn't you find it very strange how um, all the efforts were being made to ensure that drugs were not accessible in Africa, and if they were, they were going to be one out of price for the Africans? And when, what was the disease, that, or something happened in America? I can't remember. Anthrax. Anthrax, when that happened in America, they, they slightly relaxed the laws, but not so in Africa. Why? So I think you're right. I think there is a conversation to be had about de depopulation. Um, The points being made there were about was the world's resources, those being predominantly in Africa, and how the West has obviously got their hands on it. So was there anyone else that wanted to make a point? Mm -hmm. Um, just the documentary or the film on TED, I found it, if anybody wants it. Yes, please. Um, it's Elizabeth, P-I-S-A-N-I, Elizabeth Pisani. 
it is called Sex, Drugs and HIV, Let's Get Rational. Elizabeth Pisani, P-I-S-A-N-I, -I, Sex, Drugs and HIV, Let's Get Rational. And it says it reveals the myriad of inconsistencies in today's political system that prevent our dollars from effectively fighting the spread of HIV. That's it. I would like to 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 to, to sort of add um, that that um, I think the turnout here in um, is reasonable, first of all. But sec second, secondly, um, for even myself who 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 has an active interest in what's going going on, the, the event wasn't presented to me. I found the event, so I I I think that's kind of the next step is to make make it accessible because there are people out there who are interested but don't 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 sort of know where to gauge the information from so um yeah that's that's basically what okay let me answer that point i organized this event i've organized it since march this year yeah. i have a mailing list of three thousand it's gone out on linkedin twitter facebook uh emails and texts since march now when we had dementia Talking about dementia in the black community, which has got on the rise in the next 20 years, is going to double, right? 11 people turned up. Black Mental Health UK organisation have been going around, they've been consulting with government about mental health in the black community and deaths in cancer when it comes to um, uh, mental health. 10 people turned up. Well, we had a good turnout for the raw food, but the other events have been poorly um, um, attended. Because of that, Burbeck said, we can't, I can't justify it using his rooms anymore. This is the second year I've been here. You know, there's plenty of information gone out, and when people have got the information, they haven't shared it out. Yeah. So then, this is a good turnout then, in your eyes. This is the best so far, but, <laughs> but this, is, this is for entertainment, this is for a film. Yeah, we're, yeah. Just, we're just dealing with issues direct with us in the UK, here right now. Majority are not interested. I agree with you completely, but... Because if, if, if I show the films, you know, I could show films all week. Mm -hmm. But what I'm doing, I'm bringing to organisations that are here in the UK dealing with black people here, and they, you know, they're struggling with just about four or five people running that organisation. I said, look, come here, I'll get you a free room, and talk to the people. But because you're not being entertained, there's no film. People are not turning up. Mm -hmm. But I do things that are not popular that people don't want to talk about. Yeah. As feedback, <laughs> <laughs> as feedback, though, as feedback, though, um, as feedback. Um, um, as I mentioned, I'm not sure. Other people, other people here have some, some, something to add as well. But I found, I found this because I looked on the Black His, Black History Walks website, mm -hmm. and I'm on their um, list. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a, that's how I found, uh, how I found it. So it could be a thing where maybe the marketing. Well, Charles, Charles, Charles is probably about two or three people that you know yeah. knew about this, and they just didn't spread the news. Yes, yeah. I if it's a rave, we'll hear the news. You, you, you can't assume that. Just, 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 just with a show of hands. Just, just, just so we can sort, 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 sort this out real, really quickly. Who, who, who found out about this direct, directly? And who found you found out about this from some, someone else or indirectly? Indirectly, yeah, yeah. Some, 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 some other way. So, so first, so first, who, who? An email in their inbox and thought I'm going to turn up and, and, and see what's going on. Okay. And who, who found out about it some some other way? So it's half and half. So it's, so it's about half and half. All right. I didn't know this question. Who knew? Okay. Who knew about the other events throughout the week? Put your hand up if you knew about the other events in the week. Mm -hmm. Who wants the mics? <laughs> Peter's family. Um, this is just to address the issue of marketing and things like that. Well, I don't know if anybody knows who I am. My name is Tommy Simpson of Bob Blackish. We do at least three events each month. And this is just to you here. Um, you know, the black community is one of the hardest communities to engage when you're doing an event. No matter what you do, we have to change the mindset of the people that we're trying to, to address. So you can send out Facebook emails, Twitters, all of that type of stuff. But unless you're changing the mindset of the people to tell them that they need to come and support these events, it's not going to happen. So, so, and word of mouth marketing is one of the best marketing out there. So hopefully, um, when people are signing their names down on the mailing list, um, they can share the information on. That's the point. Um, 
But yeah, we have to just keep doing the work. You, we've done events where only one person turned up. We do events where we're more than uh, people. So. So, and, well, and that's I think how it is. To, to, to so add on to what Charlene said. Take the positive from this exactly event. Because it. I know I've, done, I've been three events today. I've been up from what? 10 o'clock and I've done a reparations event in Tottenham. The African market in Spitalford. We're meant to do the slavery, International Slavery Remembrance um, event as well. There's loads of events going on today. So the fact that there's people in this room today and there's other events going on in community, you have to look in the positives at that. And, and look and appreciate people that are coming out and supporting the event. Don't look at the negatives. Oh, well, I'm looking at the positive, but the fact is, the fact is that the other events were not, not full or sparsely populated. The Burbick are saying, uh, cannot justify me using these rooms. But that's, that's, that's the genuinity so, of the people. So, again, I'm going to have to find another, and and to find another premises. But anyway, let's go back to the film. If it's just to be down to it, raining outside, people won't come. That's how what we find. So, you've got to look for the positive and just appreciate the people that have come down here today. Thank you. All right, we, we have another point over here. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not clear. Um, yeah, the point I want to make is um, regards to spreading words. If people are adding their names to if people are adding their names to the mailing list on here, why don't they put one or two people that they think may be interested? Their um, somebody else's email address so they they can get information from the Facebook. Good idea. Um also just mm. I just thought that, you know, that previous sort of show of hands thing, you know, I just think that is, this is just the trap that we're sort of falling into. That is just such a, a very capitalistic way of thinking. Why must we think about numbers? Why must we think about winning or victory? Why can't we just be happy that there are people coming to educate themselves, you know? Okay, yes. As you've mentioned, the black community is just such a difficult sort of um, mindset to try and reach out to because, you know, we are literally living like 100 years of trauma. We have not gone over slavery. It hasn't been very long that it's happened. And we can still, you know, trace relatives back to slavery. You know, what is important is that we need to decolonize ourselves, you know? And so, you know, we really shouldn't be thinking about winning or numbers because we are only just falling into, you know, the trap of capitalism and from that white supremacy, you know. We just have to just be thankful that people are starting to educate ourselves because as Jill Scott Heron said, the revolution will not be televised, you know. And you know, from one person, it will spread. Yeah. You know, we will just be like an amoeba or a virus and we spread that positivity, you know. You will not find this, you, it's not gonna be televised. You know, you just have to sort of admit that sometimes you're not gonna have a big turnout. I am gonna take this opportunity, okay, uh, whilst we're on this subject, to, to mention a few events that are going to be happening next month. There is, how many of you know about the Blackout Monday? Okay, right. It's, it's, it's good that a few of you know about the Blackout Monday. Those of you who don't, there is going to be a boycott, or it's been put out there for us to boycott uh, businesses that are not black owned on the 8th, 9th, and 10th of September. It's important that those businesses that are black owned, the knowledge of where they are and what, they, what their service is, is shared amongst us so we can patronize these businesses. All right, so now I've told you, it's incumbent on you to tell somebody else as well. So that Blackout Monday is actually quite you know, it, it, it has a show of force and actually makes an impact. Why are we doing it? I believe twofold. One, to ensure that black owned businesses are patronized. And two, to ensure that those businesses that aren't black owned, that disrespect us, understand that we do have, um, we do understand we do, we do have economic power. And if we decide not to spend our money with them, 
We won't. We'll spend it where we will benefit even more. Okay? There is also, on the 28th of September, there is uh, an exposition called Noir International, the best of black businesses. How many of you know that, about that? Okay, that's the 28th of September, I think it's Earl's Court or somewhere around that area. I think there's another um, expo, black business expo as well. It's earlier on in the month, I can't remember the exact date. 6th of September. 6th of, 6th of September? Right, that's Black Links, isn't it? Yeah. Right, Black Links, UK Black Links is having an expo on the 6th of September. Now that's sharing information about things that are actually really should be very important to us and we should be patronising these things. Uh, and I agree with some of the comments in terms of how many numbers are here. There should be more numbers. But I'm grateful that the numbers that are here are actually here because there are so many other choices out there for where people could be. Right? They really are. Um, and I understand where, Neil, you're coming from as well, in terms of, you know, you've been doing this uh, event for the whole week, various different things, and they haven't all been as well supported as this. I totally understand that. And, you know, where Black Cinema Club is concerned, we hold events every single month as well. And, again, attendance goes up and down. It depends on the taste of the person, where films are concerned, anyway, it, it, for what they're actually going to come out and watch. All right? So, yeah, my, quick point. Um, my... My job is my self-imposed job is to share information, and like I said, I do the things that are not popular to get the information out. Because put your hand up if you heard of heard of an organisation called Culture Dementia UK. Put your hand up if you ever heard of them before. They've got a care home for black people suffering from dementia. And there's about four or five people running the organisation. They struggle to get information out. I brought them in, come out to a room and speak to our people. So I get people in to share information. And the thing about numbers is is that we don't own the buildings that we put these, in, these um, um, shows on. We don't own them. If we owned it, we can stay up all night and whenever. But I have to justify the use of this room with numbers because we don't own this. We've lost the World Border Centre. We've lost Centre Prize. Um, Chestnut has just gone in Tottenham. We've just lost that. Another community centre has just gone. They've got a month to get out. Because we're not owning our premises. And now we've got Pepper Card building struggling to fix it up and, and get together. So the bottom line is we need our own buildings. Right. Um, I really don't like having these types of conversations where the first thing I hear is that are the negative connotations of blackness, the black mind, how inaccessible we are and how difficult we are and we just can't get ourselves together mm -hmm. but we'll go raving and um, just, just like the film, we won't take our medicine either. To me, that, that's not a different type of discourse. We won't take our medicine if you get the give us the HIV medicine. We won't come together to talk about our problem. For me, that is all the same narrative, and I just really think we have to be careful about how we talk about ourselves, because we're swallowing, we're swallowing it back up. We're not difficult to reach. We're not, actually. We're right. We're all, we're all there. For me, this is like a practical marketing thing. I use email. I'm 28 years old. My mom has never responded to an email I've sent to her. She's 51. Like, she just, it's not her thing. She don't care. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Mom, it's really interesting. No, she wants me to call her. She wants me to show her pictures. Mm -hmm. She wants me to go and get her from Fort Heath and bring her to SOAS. That's what my mom wants me to do. My mom went to SOAS, and she still wants me to do that. <laughs> this is, do you know what I mean? These are just different people who have different needs. So before we jump on our own backs and say how, how we can't, we're unreachable, maybe they're just practical things. Maybe some people want flyers. There was 5,000 produced, 5,000 flyers went yeah, out. 5, but, um, but you can't stand there and say the reason why people aren't here is because the black community are hard to reach. That's not, that's not. No, the they're not hard to reach. Can you please let me finish? Can you please let me finish? Can you please let me finish? Secondly, this idea that like every single person in the black community wants the same thing. We are not one homogenous group of people. We don't all think the same. We don't all want the same things. And maybe also that's why people aren't here. It's not because they don't know. Like We're not stupid. People make choices. Also, you went to three events today, and that's great. I was at work until five. Yeah. There's, all, there's also those reasons, you know what I mean? It's just, it's not all, it's not all because we're all bad and disengaged. We're not. No, but I'm just saying that that's how these conversations sound. I don't think anybody here thinks badly of the black community, but they have a very particular rhetoric and a very particular projection which makes us feel very particular ways about ourselves. And that's what I'm more talking to. 
Okay, this lady here. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm taking it back to the documentary. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I noticed that they didn't mention was uh, when AIDS started, how it started, where it sources, etc. A lot of you might not be aware of it, but there's a book out called Emerg uh, Emerging Viruses and talks about the development of AIDS in a lab laboratory, AIDS and Ebola, and a couple of other viruses. The certain communities... So can you repeat the name of the... There's a book, well I'll mention two books, but there's a book called Emerging Viruses, and uh, the authors did some research, he was a public health officer, and he did research on uh, AIDS and Ebola and how it was developed over the years in the United States. Now, one thing you guys need to remember that there have, um, amongst black people or people of darker color, we have melanin, and melanin is something very important to us, and melanin self-heals. Now, there's a, um, a particular uh, scholar called Dr. Lila Africa. He speaks about melanin and the importance of melanin. Now, I'm just gonna give you my opinion about something. So in that uh, documentary, <coughs> they mentioned that the African people were getting better. I think it's because of the melanin, because they have tried to kill off African people for a very long time. We've had uh, wars, we've had uh, what else? Um, famines, etc., and we're still here. Yeah. Okay, we've had slavery, and we're still here. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, they took African people because white people could not manage to survive under those conditions. Yeah. Okay, now when they realized that African people were managing to survive, then they changed the legislation. Okay. So I'm just saying that I think if we understand our bodies and how strong we are, we can better heal ourselves and don't have to rely on pharmaceuticals that actually make drugs to try and kill us off. Thank you. And keep us addicted as well. Yeah. Okay, are we, sorry, we have... Going back to the information about is it, um, Black Monday? Black, 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 Black Out Monday. Black Out Monday. Thank you for letting me know about it. Um, I would just like to encourage everybody to use that those days to also talk to our businesses about how they serve us. Because I have operated a policy of spending my Black Pounds but I don't always get good service. Yeah. Right? Right. And I do try and talk to certain shopkeepers. I want to encourage them because I want to spend my money with them. <coughs> and if I spend my money with a Nigerian, a Ghanaian brother or sister, I know some of that money is going back home. Mm -hmm. That's my philosophy, but I don't always get a good service. So let's encourage our business to learn a bit about customer service. It's an opportunity. We've got three days. It's not just in the UK, it's actually international. I believe it started in America. We start promoting it in America. Uh, it's been going for about two, three months in terms of promotion. And it's, it's on these shores now. People know about it. The word's spreading. So now that you know, spread the word as well. And try and be active in, on those three days. I'd like to ask, ask, ask a question about that also. Um, it's a great idea. I've received a text about that from about six different individuals. So it's sp spreading around and stuff. But my, my, my thing is, in this country, do we have enough black, black businesses that we can go to? Because I need petrol, I need food. I need other su 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 supplies. It would be great to, to say, okay, I'm, spend, I'm, I'm spending it at Black Enterprises, but is it feasible at the moment, is my question. Here's, here's my answer. It starts with a single drop. You may not know within those three days, but within those three days, you'll get to know how many businesses do exist, and then we build on top of that. Okay, there are, I believe, I know Black Links or, is it Black Links that has a directory? Yeah, yeah. Or Black Links have a directory. This is very, very similar. Black directories also that exist known as, as well. Also known as purple pages. Purple pages, that's it. It's various others as well. And I think, you know, if it... This is something I had a, a little bit of an idea about four years ago. And it never really went anywhere. But the mere fact that now this gathering momentum is a great thing. And it's an opportunity for us to really jump on it 
and try and develop it from, from there. In the UK, there are tons of black, business, black owned businesses, both um, high street businesses, online businesses, and, uh, and offline businesses as well, that aren't on the, on, 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 on the high streets. So I think it's an opportunity to gather that information, share it, and actually patronise them.